A protocol may refer to an original document from which subsequent documents or agreements are drawn. For our purposes, protocols will refer to preset rules and guidelines that govern behavior and frame choices. Protocols can be effectively used to maximize opportunities and happiness and minimize mistakes. Many people often create a protocol only after a particularly unpleasant experience. I'll never do that again is one of the most common responses to a mistake. We've all heard someone else say it, and we've all said it ourselves. Whatever the oath pertains to, if it's honored, the behavior going forward is going by that protocol. Hopefully the future results from the changed behavior are much improved, or at least the mistake is not repeated. This is the hard and often costly value of an experience. It's been said that if you learn something, you'll remember it, but if you experience something, you'll know it. Think of it as the difference between someone who watches a documentary about war on television and someone who's actually been to war. To avoid an unpleasant experience, you can create protocols. These are rules that you create and live by decisions you make in advance. The direction and quality of your life will be reflected in the protocols that you hold most dear. Hello ladies, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to talk all about how we can make decisions like old money women. If that sounds like your cup of tea, my name is Nicole and I've been sharing my level up journey with you all. And more specifically lately, we have been talking about old money and this month, old money women and how we can adopt some of their values and their habits. Because the thing is, you will not be able to become old money. You either are old money at birth or you're not. I guess you could become old money if you marry into old money. Let me know in the comments if you think that that's a way you could become old money. <laughs> but for the most part, you will never be able to become old money if you aren't old money at birth. So if you like talking about old money and leveling up, I would be so honored if you subscribed and please like this video to let me know that you're liking this content and this topic. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea to go and leave a comment. So even if you just like it, I'll take notice. So if you have been watching any of the videos in this series, I have mentioned it so many times that my biggest aha moment recently has been the fact that I didn't know myself before. And when you don't know yourself, you therefore can't make appropriate decisions for yourself. Yourself. You might kind of get yourself to somewhere successful, but not as effectively as you could have done if you knew yourself. And I think there's often many online forums and courses and personal development books and workshops that you can go to that will talk to you about one area of knowing yourself, but really you need to look at almost all of the categories of your life. And that is one of the reasons I wanted to bring this topic to the YouTube channel and really dive deep in how old money women go through their decision-making process. And so one of my biggest takeaways in this book is to have protocols for corresponding categories. And so I think if I had this book a few years ago, I definitely wouldn't have felt like I was floundering through business and through life. And even though I think that I've got to a good place that is even allowing me to pick up a book like this and study it so thoroughly, like <laughs> you're gonna see all my highlights and stuff in there. I think that I could have had a smoother experience to getting here. So if you're watching this and you think, oh wow, like I want to level up and I'm doing all right on my own. Yes, you might be doing all right on your own, but are you coming out on the other side of that battered and wounded <laughs> and bruised? Or do you think that you could go through this in a smoother process? And so this is one of the reasons of why I really liked the chapter of this book that goes into making decisions because they gave us one, two, three, four, four categories that we can and ask ourselves certain questions. And I feel like if I asked myself these questions a while ago, I would have had a better understanding of who I am and then therefore make better decisions. So one of the first categories that they, they listed in this book is your religious or spiritual beliefs. And the thing is about religious beliefs, it dictates the morals and the values that you have in your life. And therefore that is going to dictate your actions. Now, I do think that we live in a day and age where a lot of people are baptized a certain religion and they don't have the morals or the values to stand by that. But I do think that, you know, my, my dad said this to me, I was dating a guy many moons ago of a different faith. And he was like, you know, Nicole, there's two things that you can't change about somebody, their race and their religion. And for the most part, I actually think that he is right by that because there are people that convert, but often the little things that they do in their 
life, you'll see that they learned that from whatever religion or I guess even atheism that they had growing up and then it becomes a habit. So religious beliefs is going to be one of the categories that we talk about because it dictates the morals and the values. It dictates your rituals and it also it also determines and dictates how you interact with people. Now, the next category that they spoke about in the book is personal, which is quite vague. <laughs> now, this personal category is quite broad, but in a nutshell, it's going to dictate how you use your personal time. It's going to dictate what you consume and that is broad. So what you consume with drink, with food, with TV, with media, with art, etc. And then it's also going to dictate how you provide. Maybe you are somebody that you want to, you know, go and be a general laborer for the rest of your life and that's something that's okay with you. Or maybe you're somebody that you're always wanting to challenge yourself to something better and something more and therefore you're always constantly leveling up your skills. Now, the next category is professional. Now, your professional protocols are going to dictate how you show up in your professional environment. Something that I've noticed for me as a content creator, I realized that I didn't want to show up in a low quality way. And so for me, you won't really see me taking pictures with my cell phone. I mainly bring out my DSLR camera or shoot with a photographer, etc. In regards to how I conduct myself with other content creators, you know, it can be a vicious, savage, and gossipy industry. I'm noticing that my personal protocols mold into my professional protocols and perhaps I am not speaking about people in a certain manner. Now, your professional protocols will also dictate how much self-improvement that you do. Equally, your professional protocols will allow you to assess if you're going to be going after some type of professional title. Now, last but not least, we're going to talk about the financial category as this will dictate how how much you earn and then therefore that will dictate how much you save and how much you spend and then obviously that will then in turn dictate what type of investments that you have if any what is involved in establishing a protocol one way to establish a protocol is to have an experience yourself feel the pain or the reward that comes from your choices then vow to always do something or never do something in a particular way going forward Another way to establish a protocol for yourself is to listen to, digest, and heed wise advice from someone else who knows more or has seen more than you. You borrow someone else's experience, knowledge, courage, or perspective from them and apply it to your situation. Remember that in order to benefit from the establishment and use of a protocol, you need to make them in advance, before you get ambushed, unprepared, and make an important choice, and before the resulting painful experience has you grumbling and swearing out the side of your mouth. So one of the things that I wrote down from this book, it said, essentially protocols and guidelines will elevate your behavior through any circumstance. And then therefore, if you saw the last video all about how we can challenge ourselves like old money women, we should have then learned the resiliency to implement these protocols no matter what the situation is. So do you see how if you've watched all the videos in this series, they're all kind of flowing into one another? So let's look at how old money women do this and let's look at some of their protocols. So number one, old money women, they earn more than they spend, full stop. I think that as somebody who isn't old money, we can think that it's very easy, but remember, a lot of these old money families, and trust me, I've learned so much from people in my life recently, they are living off of the dividends that they have. So they might have investments or they might have businesses, and then therefore, they are living off of the dividends that they have, and so if their company does well, they might splash out a little bit more. If the company doesn't do well that month, then they rail it in. So they are working to a budget as well. Now, old money women, one of their other protocols is to always be dressed. Think about it. When do you see many old money women looking drab and shabby? They might not be the trendiest person, they're more timeless and classy, but you rarely ever see them on an off day. Another thing that old money women live by, and it's one of their protocols, is they're going to always be reading. Honestly, if there's one thing that any of you take away from any of these series that I ever do, is reading has really enriched my life. And I think we, we hear, oh, we should be reading, but then we don't do it. I think it's because we don't wanna dedicate the time to it, but my life has been so enriched lately, and I feel like I have found a friend 
through the pages of the books that I'm reading. So if you are struggling with community and you're looking for a friend, oh my gosh, go pick up a book that is in whatever topic it is that you want to learn more about. Now, another protocol when it comes to old money women and making decisions is they always do what needs to be done, whether they're going to enjoy it or not. Now, I think this could be a topic for a completely different video and a completely different series, but old money women are very selective with their partners. You don't see them dating somebody new every single week, and they do keep things a little bit more on the down low. Old money women also don't loan out money, which again, I think is a topic for a different video. And believe it or not, old money women, they actually deliberate over their purchases, especially if they're going to be expensive. Now, think about the physical look of old money women. What do they look like? What are you picturing in your head? Usually they're very slim and some of them, you know, maybe take it a little bit too far. I think we all know about Princess Diana, but I think what I've observed in a lot of old money women is that they are fit and they are active. And I think before I was naive to think like, oh, you know, they have all the time in the world to be working out whenever they want, but no, they've just, they've made it a priority in their life. Now this one is quite controversial and I think one of the other books that I'm going to discuss early here on this series is Business Etiquette Made Easy. It's a book by Micah Meyer. But this next point is old money women only do business with people they know or have a referral. And most of my clientele are people that have been referred to me, but up until now, I have been very intentional about not doing business with people that I know, just because I feel like it's been a bit difficult if there's any issues that come up. But I think if I really learn from that business etiquette made easy from Micah Meyer, I might reframe my thoughts on that. But again, apparently this is something that old money women do. Last but not least, old money women prioritize saving and spending. Old Money Secret. The better your decision-making process, the better the results of those decisions, and the higher your overall quality of life. Establishing protocols, set-in-stone rules, boundaries, procedures, or points of reference that inform and shape choices contributes to consistently good decision-making.